Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Mike Semper, VV also of WrestlingObserver.com. By the way, should mention that NXT show on Tuesday did a giant number. 656,000 and a .24. Joe Hendry seems to be a draw. The two times he's been on were big. <laughs> Might be Joe Hendry. I think it's a lot of stuff, obviously. He's two for two. I mean, we had to follow up, like, what's Trick going to do? He lost the title. Did they put the title on Ethan Page? They teased throughout the show. The funniest he thing was, like, they kept begging the fans to say Joe Hendry's name, but they just would not do it. So he finally just showed up anyway. I have the quarter hours come out. Yeah. Okay. From the time that they announced that Javon Evans was hurt and was going to be out, what did the number do? Oh, this again? Yes. You look, because look, if it goes down, you can say, damn it, see, they said it, and people thought he was going to be in the main event, and they all tuned out. Let's... Or is Joe Hendry a bigger star than Javon Evans? Well, uh, <laughs> the highest quarter was the opening quarter, which did 735, and that was setting up the uh, main event. And then it dropped to 664, rose to almost 700 again. And I'm pretty sure that's where uh, he got beaten up. And then it did fall to 634. But I'm listen, I'm not blaming it. Here's the thing, everybody. I'm not saying that the last few weeks was all because of Javon Evans. What I'm saying is that the the declines over the last several weeks was partly because you got people really thinking that this Javon Evans was getting a push. And then you yanked out the rug over and over and set up a four-way that people didn't want to see. And that's it. Now the four-way is over. We've got a new champion, Tricks the Challenger, and people tuned in to see this match. I wish Lance would. I don't know if you're tuned into this or not, but the guy is getting a push. You just wanted him slingshotted into the stratosphere. Brother, he got beat up and taken out of the tag match. You literally said, if this guy gets beat up on Tuesday, I'll be on the same page as you. And he pinned. did, and you're still if back gets, on it again. If he gets beaten or pinned, which he did not, it was to set up Joe Henry. He got in beaten there and, and taken out of the main event. Oh, I, I, I think Brian's point, even if he doesn't articulate it as well as I think he should, is that, yes, Javon will be fine, but he, there is the opportunity, and you only get it once, to really strap a rocket to somebody and make people think, holy crap, this is a new young sensation. Thank you. He's a big deal. And if you turn around on that, kneecap him at that, wait and hold off till later, he can still become a star. But there is that brand new breakout, you know, holy crap, this guy's a sensational, a phenom, whatever. There is the possibility to really catch someone on fire if they have something special, which I think a lot of people agree Javon does. And the longer you take to light that fuse, I think the spark is a little less bright. I don't know. I think the fuse is lit, and I think they're able to rely on the reaction that he gets and that, you know, does help matters because for the time being, he has been unsinkable. Now, they may take that away, but he, to me, is as much as you can be as a made man there right now because they had people go up to the main roster. They have new people coming in. They had a shuffle going on that... Maybe they didn't manage it as well. Maybe they were expecting, obviously, no Amdar's injury and things like that kind of hurt things, but I don't know. I, I still think, I think what's happening with, well, I'm more worried about Braun Breaker on the main roster than I am Javon Evans' position within NXT. Just I, I because think... there's somebody who I think you could have, you know, done a run with. Yeah, they're both the exact same thing. I don't like, I agree as well that they drop the ball by having Sammy beat this guy, and then they go out of their way to try to give him his, his heat back. And it's like, it would have been easier to just have him win, and then you don't have to give him his heat back. Because he's probably winning the next time around, and they wanted to make sure that we give Sammy something before we beat him. And I'm curious how big of a star a guy like Javon Evans could be if he was afforded the protection that they give the monsters. Exactly. Those guys that, you know, don't sell much, never get beat, are presented as these indestructible big guys. And they, you know, in the past oh, more so than now, they protect these guys as they're unbeatable. It's like, you know, you could do that with a smaller guy that's got something and see where it gets gets you.
Well, you can also do it with more than one guy at the same time because they are doing that right now with Oba Femi. He is that guy. So, you know, there is that as well, too, where, you know, they're making him stand out so much because now he seems to be oblivious to everyone and everything. So it opens up with Will Ospreay coming down. MJF interrupts, and they set up MJF Ospreay next week on TV free for the international title. And uh, all of my booking is... is uh, is set up to me uh, through Wembley and even further on because my presumption when the show is over is MGF is beating Osprey, winning the international title, beating Pac, retaining the international title. Osprey gets his rematch at Wembley. Osprey gets his big win in front of 40,000 people over MJF. Everybody is happy. So that's my booking there. And then the next match was Danielson and Hangman. And I can talk a lot about this tonight. I know a lot of people were upset with the uh, the finish. I can understand because, in fact, for those of you that don't recall, I very much argued against bringing Hangman back for the Owen Hart Cup. There's a reason that I said this is a bad idea. You're bringing him back. People are going to want to see him versus Swerve. You're bringing him back to immediately lose after all that time. And, you know, Brian Danielson, we've talked about before, for whatever reason, Dave says it was for a swerve. I don't know. Danielson did all these interviews saying, I don't want to be the world champion. While he is in a match where the winner gets a shot at the world title. And here we are. My presumption is that Brian Danielson beat Swerve in Wembley. And then they go on to Wrestle Dream in Tacoma. A hometown hero versus hometown hero match, and Swerve wins the title back there. That's my presumption for where this is going. How Hangman plays into this in the future, who knows? But the Hangman is out. This match was awesome, by the way. Fabulous match. Yeah, it was a great match. I do not like your thought of having both champions lose a quick one just to get it back. Um, I think I would have Swerve win at Wembley and uh, keep Swerve strong. Danielson is Teflon and he is at the level he is at and will be at that level probably for the rest of his life. Um, I would, uh, I'd give it to Swerve personally. Lance, did Brian ask you if it was okay to use the rolling single leg crab? Um, he didn't, but he commented as soon as he saw me in the building and he was going to do it that night. <laughs> we had the Smojo Jericho Calgary street fight, which spilled into the back the uh, entire learning tree attacked Joe. They choke slammed him onto a pallet on a forklift, and Jericho drove it through the side of the building. Injury angle to put Jericho out of action for a while. They already put Hook out of action. So uh, they're going on a tear. Put Joe out of action. And Joe out of action. They're going on a. Well, he put Hook out of action too last week. Well, Fireball. you said Jericho. Jericho put Hook. It doesn't matter. We're going to get a big six man or. Some point he'll put himself out of action. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he has at some point. Lance was there, actually. It was a shooting star press in Smoky yeah. Mountain Wrestling. He put himself out of action. No, he didn't. He worked that night. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, then he had to be out of action, right? <laughs> he was out for like a couple weeks. Yeah, he put himself out of action. And yes, he broke the walls down yesterday. Then we had a four-way for a international title shot. Pac, Ishii, Kyle Fletcher, and Claudio. And Pac won. There seems to be massive confusion. The story is that Pac gets a future international title shot. He said that he wants it at Wembley. It is not specific for Wembley. I do not think they're doing a multi-person match. I think it's Will Ospreay versus MGF in a single. And however this works out for Pac, and I mean, he can get any match on Wembley. It doesn't have to be for the international title. But I believe that that international title match is going to come prior to Wembley, and MGF will beat him. That is my thought. We had uh, the announcement that Swerve is going to be in uh, Blood and Guts, which led to Hangman wanting to be in Blood and Guts, because he's obsessed with exactly one thing, which is taking out Swerve. We had a great simple, it was so simple. Mercedes comes out for a victory toast. She is a total heel. She is miles, light years better as a heel. Hallelujah. Out comes Brit. The place goes crazy. 
she starts beating up security, and she heads down to the ring, and Mercedes, in her, I thought this was her greatest moment maybe in her career, the way she fled from the ring was so freaking funny. I was dying. It was the greatest heel run in high heels. Oh, she's got her. And uh, Britt gets in the ring, and like the place is going nuts, and that's all they did. And the match felt so big, I thought this segment was great. They didn't need any more than they did. Yeah, when uh, when Mercedes hit uh, claimed to be the best there is, was, and ever will be, um, that pretty much cemented her as the biggest heel in the world in Calgary. And uh, speaking of shredded, Britt looks like a billion dollars, and uh, crowds into her. So yeah, this match feels huge, and that's all they needed. Britt's got a twelve pack, like a legit twelve pack, I believe now with her abs. I'm not even sure you have twelve, but uh, she does. Thank you. Pretty sure it. she does. Then we had Mariah and Willow in the Women's Owen Cup final. I thought it was a good match. I thought the finish was great. They did the victory roll finish that Owen used to pin Brett at WrestleMania 10. She wins the tournament, and then like they just skip up the ramp together, and she grabs that belt and clobbers Tony. There was no argument. There was no nothing. She got her shot, and so she took out Tony, and Tony bleeds. Luther gets murdered, thrown off the ramp. Tony shoves down Aubrey. I'm sorry, uh, Mariah shoves down Aubrey, and then she kisses Tony and rubs Tony's blood all over her face. Great, great angle. And, you know, it's funny. It's like people had so much fantasy booking for Wembley, and, like, all of their fantasy booking involving the men they aren't getting those matches. Yet, like the two hottest matches right now on Wembley, both involve the women. Mercedes and Britt and uh, Mariah May and Tony feel like two of the hottest like rivalries in the entire company, and they both appear to be paying off at Wembley. So I like this a lot. Yeah, this was a real strong, effective angle. And it was good because I always like, it's like, what was the impetus of the turn? And, you know, there wasn't an actual emotional one, but there was the Mariah has been with her from the get go. And she now has her match against Tony. She no longer needs a friend. She needs an opponent to beat. And she turned on Tony and kudos for Tony for, uh, boy, she, she put this angle over strong by uh, bleeding like crazy. And it was a, a hell of a closing shot and a very effective angle. I will say that if I had one complaint about the show, and it's old school, I would not have had Brian Danielson bleeding in the opener. I would yeah. have saved all blood for this. This would have been even more dramatic if it was the only blood we'd seen on the entire show. But we did have the, uh, you know, the opening segment where Brian actually gigged it twice. He was bleeding early, and then he took a pile driver on the floor, and he, he bled again from a different point in his head. And, you know, Brian Danielson sells great. It would it would have been just as good a match without the blood, and you could have saved it for this segment here to have it have even more impact. But Was oh, was Hangman bleeding? I think he might have hard weight, or maybe it was just I Danielson's think it was all of all Danielson's blood on him. But it was also a lot up here in his hair, so he could have got he could have got a hard way. But Yeah, they, they worked hard. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.